So my question was, seeing Big T so happy at the facility, right. does it change your perspective on playing for Tennessee, for the volunteers, Ooh. of how much joy you brought to Means a lot to a lot of people. Like good Big question. T, he how it. much they loved question. you guys and loved the program. It's a good question. It's a good does, one. does it change your right. perspective on your whole time That's at UT? That's a great UT? question. It, it is an amazing question. All right. So I'm going to say this. I called my mother after I left the facility, the practice facility, when I first visited. Because I've had a lot of issues with the University of Tennessee. More, more as it wasn't necessarily the, the university and the people involved, it was more so the institution. And I had issues with the way things were run. And long story short, I called my mother today after I came back. I haven't, I haven't been back in 10 years. And I was emotional. The reason why I was emotional was because when I was here, I was a young kid. And I was talking to my boys about this tonight. I was a young kid, like when I grew up, like when your mother looks at you in your eyes and say, yo, there's no food tonight, that's a real feeling. You know, I felt that a lot when growing up. Gunshots, hearing gunshots growing up. Just grow up in that environment. And then coming here and fighting for your future. And, and, and having you feel like adults are hindering that future, it's one of the most frustrating things that you can have. Like, yo, y'all supposed to be guiding me, but you fucking me. And so you feel like the world is against you. And so coming back, long story short, coming back, having all of that animosity and all of those feelings and coming back feeling like I did it anyway, there's so many people and I'm getting emotional now, but there's so many people that show me so much love that I got overwhelmed. I was talking about the training staff. I had 30 minute conversations with the head trainer that I used to talk to every day. The administrators, the equipment managers, all these cats I haven't seen in 20 years, coming back, got me so emotional and so grateful for the time that I spent that any animosity that I had is just gone. And it was like a really awakening moment for me because it was like, when you come from nothing like I came from nothing, and when you have what I have now, you appreciate everything. <clears throat> and it's seeing that juxtaposition from when I was here and I didn't have anything and I was struggling. And, I, and I, like, like there's an ongoing joke with a lot of Tennessee fans where it's like, when we was broke, and we, we told a coach, like, yo, he's going to go do something stupid if you don't get us some food. He came and brought us tacos. So there's like a taco jokes going on. But so, so from coming from something like where we was really out here grinding and had nothing to what I have now and coming back to see the love that these people show, it just warmed my heart. It warmed my spirit. And I was in a place where I was like, uh, when this nigga was... Petting Smokey. <laughs> yeah. I was. And you I, was can, no, I was scratching his and, ear. And you can cut to that. Yeah. But when he was petting that dog, and I still don't fuck with dogs, but I was under the tent looking at it's Circle Park, right? It's called Circle Park. Yeah. I, was, I was under the tent on the grass, and I was looking at the place where I used to go to class. I used to walk every day. I used to take the tea to the hill to all my other classes. And I was just looking like, 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 bro, I really did what I set out to do when I was seven years old. I almost cried. It's pretty good. I almost cried. And that was a great fucking question, my G. It's pretty good. It's a great fucking question. Good job, yeah. And, yeah. like, it, there's a lot of stuff that goes into playing college sports in America yeah. when they're making millions of dollars and the, the players for a long time weren't making anything at all. And I can understand how you were feeling. Like, any time that there was a setback, it was somebody standing in between you and your goal. At the end of the day, like it ended up working out pretty well for you, which is great. And so, it, but it's not. I'm, I'm not saying like it's because. No, no, no. All the setbacks happened. The, the, no, no. The realization I had was this: was let's say a coach says, "Okay, you're not playing in front of this guy. We're choosing him now." In your mind, 
my dream has ended. You feel me? Yeah. And so that, and not understand, I mean, growing up with the emotional toe that I grew up with, I wasn't equipped to handle those emotions at that age, so that turned into anger and rage, and I directed it at the wrong people. And so coming back, what I really saw was the shit that I accomplished, the people that was here and saw that struggle were proud of me. You feel me? Yeah. And that shit changed. Oh, fuck. No, it's good. It's good. It's good. <laughs> Man, dog, give him a hug. Give him a hug. <laughs> no, but shit. Give him a hug. It, it changed my perspective of the entire... My entire uh, experience here. Because that's real, dog. Yeah. I seen people I know for 20 years come up, come up to me like... Proud of you. That shit crazy. Fuck. Is that God so, Aaron? Aaron, Aaron it's, 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 I get it, and I, I know that like it's yeah. it's, it's tough to oh, do. It was. That. I know I had an emotional time yeah. today. I had an emotional ass moment. And I, like I said, I called my mom. And I was like crying on the phone. I was like, I call my. Okay, keep going, keep going. I called my mom. Like <laughs> no, I, I called my mom. I was, I was like crying on the phone. I didn't understand why I was so emotional, but um. I went through therapy a lot of times, like in my later years, like when I was in the NFL, and I realized all, all of the all of the emotions that I blocked out, all of the emotions that I blocked out, um, was like a uh, uh, a self defense mechanism. But what I didn't realize was you you don't get to be you don't get to pick and choose the emotions that that come in, and so. The negative emotions that I was protecting myself from, <clears throat> I was also avoiding myself from the positive emotions that people were trying to show me. Yeah. Feel me? And so that was the realization I had today. And so it was, it was so emotional. So you know what's crazy is like, I, and I appreciate you saying all this stuff because yeah. I know it's it's tough sometimes to to like dive into that yeah, and, yeah, and to feel that way. Fact. It is. Fact. What's crazy is, like, I guarantee you there are some people that are actually listening to Macrodose right now that are thinking about, like, what they're dealing with growing up and relating to what you're saying, whether it's whether it's athletics or whether it's maybe they're into art or in, they're into any other specific, you know, you know, point of interest that they have that are identifying with what you're saying and, and that are loving it, so... That's cool, man. Thank you. Well, I, think, I think the main thing is just like the shit that I learned from all of this is like, bro, never be too cool to feel. You know what I mean? Because people care. Yeah. And if you and if you block them out, you don't get to feel that. I've seen so many people show you love here yeah. on campus yeah. today, yeah. and. I'm, I'm happy for you, man. Yeah, I really yeah. am. I, it was it was a wild experience because, like, yeah. in my head, I'm like, yo, them like, they hate me. But it's like when you come back and you see all these people show you so much love, it's like, damn, I get it. There's a yeah. lot of love out there. Yeah, yeah.